Tom Hitman from the Hitman Blues Band, and welcome to Intermediate Blues Guitar. Now, you've probably seen a lot of uh, how-to videos on YouTube that go over the basics of playing blues guitar, mainly dealing with pentatonic scales and being able to play those in the various positions, and maybe some uh, modal instruction. If you are not familiar with the idea of a blues progression or how to play a blues scale, in all five of the positions. Please stop watching this now. Take a look at some of the other instructional videos that are available. There's a lot of great ones. And when you feel comfortable with that, come back here. But let's assume we're all on the same page. The one problem that a lot of people uh, have when they're past the point of learning about the scales, but then they're not really sure what they're supposed to be doing with them, they hit a wall. They know certain riffs and they can't really break out of that. Now one thing that we're going to go over a little bit today is how to use what you already know more effectively. One of the things that people tend to forget, especially on guitar, is the timbre of the sound, the way that you're approaching the sound. Most fine guitar players, especially in blues, will try to emulate a saxophone player because of the expressiveness that you can get from the sax. And many fine sax players will try and emulate the sound of a human voice because that is the most expressive instrument. Think about it, from the sound of a human voice, if you hear the sound of a woman screaming or a baby crying or somebody laughing, it will stir up emotions. And as an instrumentalist, we're trying to evoke that same kind of emotional response. And in order to do that, we want to try and emulate those kinds of sounds. Let's take a very simple blues riff, and we're going to play it very straight. Now you probably recognize this as just being a simple pentatonic or blues scale with a passing tone in there. Now it's an okay riff, you know, doesn't have uh, much excitement to it. Now one of the things that we can do, notice the riff starts like this. Well one thing that you could do right away, when you have two of the same note, you hit the second note on a different string, so you get this, as opposed to, and of course we add a little vibrato on that. Uh, now if we're going, so instead we're going to try this, um, and then instead of hitting this note, we're going to bend up to it. Now granted, that second bend, we're going a little sharp of the original note. If you want to get exactly the same note, you would do this. But this gives us that more human quality of... And now the rest of the riff was... So what we can do instead is... Notice that I'm not going, but I'm doing this. So we're accenting, accenting on the passing tone. The whole riff then comes out like this. Sounds a lot better. We have another option. So far we've done hitting the same note on a different string, and bending up to notes, and sometimes over bending a little bit. You also have the option of bending up to a note and then repeating it.
the other part of the riff originally went so what we could do is this it's the perception of where you're playing the uh, position of that blues scale the first one the first variation that I gave you we went all back into the first position but this time we're going to move into the second position which normally is this and what we're going to do is the first part of the riff now we move up to the second position and we stay there and this of course is really kind of off an A minor triad and if you get that picture in your head of a little A chord up here or A minor because we're doing the C natural uh, then you're just kind of staying here and again we're hitting on the passing tone this idea of is something that you probably run across but a lot of times you might not recognize it when you're playing it along with the individual notes of a chord okay so when we put this all together we can add on additional riffs let me get a little blues progression going here and I'm going to play it once in a very straight fashion and then I'm going to play the same notes but I'm going to try and do it with a little more expression and feeling band in the box come on So you can see how you could take really the notes and by adding a little more expression to it and feeling by using these little tricks, they're not really tricks, they're just taking advantage of the nature of the guitar, you can make it a much more interesting kind of a sound. Now what you need to do is take some of your old tired riffs that you've been doing and see if you can reinvigorate them, at least one or two of them using this kind of a method and see how that works out for you. Now if you take a listen to um, our new album which is called Pale Rider you'll hear these uh, methods being used on a lot of the lead breaks. Uh, the very first tune on the album, Your, Your Blues, has a lot of this stuff right in the very first solo on that tune. So see if you can uh, you know, take a listen to that. There are free samples of it in various places on the internet. And uh, you can even download the tunes individually and see if you can recognize what's going on with that. I hope you found this useful and helpful and there will be some more stuff on more advanced things, some, some slide riffs and more advanced things that you can do with blue scales and uh, various modes mixed in. And that will be coming later. In the meantime, keep playing guitar and thanks for listening.